But um, we have two, two very awesome people about to share their testimonies tonight. Um, it's actually a brother-sister combo. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Um, we got some musical notes. That's all good. Um, but the first person up tonight, he is, he is, he's, he's a guy. I mean, he's one of those guys. Man, he's honestly he's an inspiration to me. Um, I've known him for a few years. I've known him since he was actually an intermediate um, in the SU Junior program. He's he's such an awesome guy. He's really rised up. He's a Westlaker. Any Westlakers in the house tonight? Swans up! Swans up! Swans up! Right, that's what we're about. That's what we're about. But honestly, tonight. Um, as these, these two people get up to speak, I just really encourage you just to pay attention. You know, don't be distracted on Instagram or the person next to you because it, it really takes a lot of courage to get up here and share your story in front of, you know, your peers. So make sure you just really pay attention tonight. It's not going to be long. So I just really, just open up your ears, alright? So turn to the person next to you and tell them, are you listening? Are you listening? Alright. Turn to the other person and say, if you don't listen, I'm gonna tell you. Alright, so make sure you listen tonight. Alright, so without any more babbling on, let's all give it up for the one, the only, Caleb Pilkinson. So I remember sitting in the corner of my room just like asking Jesus, can you come into my heart? Can you come into my heart? Because I didn't know if he was in my heart or not. <laughs> so um, I always believed, but I also always doubted. Um, I doubted because my mum, she um, always said that she heard God's voice, but I never heard it. And um, he never showed me that he was real. So I always doubted until men's conference last year. Um, everyone was worshipping and I just felt the Holy Spirit come over me and at that moment I realised that God was real. So uh, that night I properly accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour. Weeks after that, I kind of faded away from God again uh, until summer camp 2K17. Um, we were worshiping one night, and um, the Luke, my man Luke, came off stage and prayed for me. And that was probably the most powerful prayer I've ever prayed over me. And after that prayer, uh, God showed me how much He loved me. And that's like more than you can even imagine. And he also showed part of his plan for me. Um, after that, my relationship with God just got stronger and stronger every day. And a few weeks ago, I decided to get um, baptized. And on the 28th of May, I got baptized. 
And that's only the start of my journey with God. I still got a long way to go. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, right now, we're going to get back into a time of worship. Worship is awesome, isn't it? Thank you. Worship is great. Worship is so good. Um, so we really just encourage you guys just to not care about the person next to you. Don't, don't care if you're sitting, standing next to your crush or whoever it may be. No one cares about that right now. Because, but right now, we're just going to spend the time in worship. Worship is so awesome because we can spend time with God, the creator of the universe. And it's going to be awesome tonight because we're just really um, expecting God to speak tonight. So wherever you might, might be here tonight in the building, we just really encourage you. That was awesome, Thomas. Let's give it up for Thomas on the keys. But worship is so cool. And so don't take it for granted. We've only got one worship song tonight, so make the most of it. Come to the front. Yeah, come to the front, stand wherever. But we'll get it back to the instrument. Awesome. Yeah, like Matt was saying, let's not take this, um, let's not take advantage of this um, time that we have because. <clears throat> because God went through, Je Jesus went through so much 2,000 years ago so that we could come here and be able to do this without restrictions, without, um, you know, without any restrictions as to how we come to Him or when we come to Him. And yeah, it was just.
And Lord, we thank you tonight, God. We thank you that we can come to a place, Lord, where we don't have to worry about being a servant of someone. We don't have to worry about oppressing anyone, God. Lord, we don't have to worry about people not accepting us, God, because we know that you accept us for who we are, God. And Lord, we just give tonight to you, God. Lord, we just allow you to speak to us tonight, God. We may have had a crap week. We may have, you know, been struggling at school. But Lord, we thank you so much that tonight you have a message to us, God. Lord, you want to speak to every single person in this room, God. Whether we believe in you or not, God. You love us so much, God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are so much bigger than anything we'll ever face. And we're going to sing that bridge one more time. So I just encourage you guys right now just to lift up your hands. Maybe you've never done it before, but I just really encourage you to take the risk tonight. Don't worry about the person standing next to you. Don't worry about what they think, because it only matters about what God thinks about you tonight. But if God wants to speak to you tonight, God has a message for you tonight. God wants to fill you up with joy. You may be struggling tonight. You may be in a dark place. But God always wants to speak life into you. God always wants to rise you up. He always wants to empower you. It doesn't matter what's happening in your life. It doesn't matter what's happening in your family. It doesn't matter what's happening in school. God has a purpose upon your life. God has a calling upon your life. And we have to just focus on God tonight. Let's just set aside distractions. Let's just set aside, set aside whatever may be on our minds tonight. Let's just focus on God. So as the band keeps playing, let's just lift that temple up. Just lift up your hands to God tonight. Let's just sing that chorus one more time.
Oliver Green's first time up on the drums. Give it up for him. Also Jacob. Jacob on the bass. Give it up for Jacob. Good man. Good man. Alright, I'm gonna come down here. Um, so now I have the honour of welcoming up our last speaker for the night. And I've seen this girl grow up in church. Um, and the thing that I love about this girl is that she steps out consistently. She steps out. Um, and just like Emily, she shows up. All the time she's showing up, she, she shows up expected, she shows up excited for what God's going to do. So we're going to welcome up Alyssa. Woo! sharing a very a testimony about a very small part of my life but I'm sharing it because it has made such a dramatic impact um, on me. So quick backstory about my Christian life and life overall. Um, I, w I grew up in a Christian family. Um, I basically always had a connection with God. Um, I had great parents, uh, great brothers, um, great friends, most of them are Christians. Um, I always did well in school and I was known as that girl who was always happy and never ceased to have a smile on her face. Um, so intermediate were literally the best two years of my life and I made some of my best memories and best friends there. Um, so obviously I had to leave intermediate at some point and I came to high school and that's where my testimony really starts. Um, so I'm a year nine this year and I have nearly enjoyed half of your half of your high school. Um, so for the first week of school, I didn't particularly enjoy school, and which was very strange for me because I've just always been a person who loved coming to school. Um, I didn't dread it, but I just simply didn't really enjoy being there. I kept telling myself that school was going to get better, like as it as it progressed. But after a while, I realized that school wasn't getting better and actually it was getting worse. Um, so it got to a point where I'd wake up each morning and I would absolutely dread the thought of going to school. Um, so, sorry, I'm saying um, a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, if I was sick, like even the slightest bit, like enough not to go to school, I would 100% take the chance and I would not go to school because I simply just did not want to go. I started praying about my situation um, and I just kept praying every night. I had been praying for a very long time, maybe a few months, and I noticed that nothing was changing um, and my happiness was not changing towards school, um, the way school felt towards me was not changing and I became extremely discouraged because I felt like God wasn't answering my prayers and that he didn't want to change my life. Um, I'll never really know why I was so unhappy at school. Um, I mean, I have made amazing friends, miraculously. I got all the fun, nice teachers, and I had the best subjects. I was getting constantly getting good grades and topping a lot of my classes. But yet, for some unknown reason, I was simply unhappy. Being unhappy had at school had not only affected the way I was at school, but it affected other aspects of my life as well. So when I went home, when I came to youth, um, just basically any time. And I, one day, about a week ago, I had got to the point where I'd just pretty much given up. But I said to God, God, I'm going to pray this one last time. And I said, God, I don't know why you have un haven't answered my prayers or helped me to become happy at school. But I'm asking just one more time. Just one more time that you would help my situation and that you would help me be happy and that I would enjoy life in school. And I woke up the next morning, and the first thing I said to myself was, Alyssa, today is going to be a good day. I left to school with high spirits, and for the first time in a very long time, I was excited and looking forward to school. 
Um, I'm going to be perfectly honest here and say I had an absolutely crap day that day. But because God had granted me that happiness, I spent the day feeling like I was on an island of paradise. And since then, I have woken up each day excited for school and life, and I have enjoyed every moment of it tremendously. I, I'm just, I'm such a happy person um, now, and this small miracle has changed my whole view of life. Um, so I just want to say, tonight, if you're sitting here, and you feel like God hasn't answered your prayers, um, no matter how long you've been praying for, I'm telling you, don't give up. Don't lose hope. Because no matter what decision God makes in your life, He is here to bring peace. He's here to bring joy. And most of all, He's here to bring love in your life. God asks us to be patient. And a lot of the time, His answers to our prayers is wait. God knows what time to bring breakthrough in our life. But always have faith in Him and keep praying and He will come through for you. I'm just going to um, finish off on a Bible verse, which I forgot to bring my Bible tonight, so I have to borrow one. Luke 18, verse 1 to 8. Then Jesus told His disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones, who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. Thank you. Wow, how good was those, uh, those three messages. Let's give it up for those awesome young ones tonight. Wow.